Good morning, Wildcats. Um, in celebration of our Literacy Week, we have a very special guest. Our very own local author from the Navarre area is Miss Marion Marchetto. Welcome, Marion, today. Thank you, Shannon. It's nice to be here. Hi, Wildcats. Good morning. And um, actually, I have to tell you that Miss Marchetto, uh, her husband is Mr. Donald Marchetto, who also works here. So she is, she really is a Wildcat. When we bring her here, she is a Wildcat, and she is part of our family. Thank you. Um, now, Miss Marchetto is the author of three books, which um, are historical fiction, and I brought her here today to talk to you guys about her books and how she got started in reading or writing, and um, just tell us all about it. Um, first of all, how did you get into writing, Miss Marchetto? Well, I can tell you, Shannon, that I have wanted to write ever since I was seven years old. Wow. Oh, yeah. My dad was a storyteller, and he told the best stories, and both he and my mom loved to read, and that's where I got that love of reading from. And ever since I could read those fairy tales and wild stories, I thought, you know, what fun it must be to be able to sit down and write this. And so I tried, and tried, and tried, and tried, all the way through grammar school and all the way through high school, which led me into being on the newspaper staff in high school and took a couple of creative writing classes and as extracurricular activities in high school. And after a while, life kind of got in the way, you know, work, marriage, and so on. And I really didn't pick it up again until about 15 years ago when I got serious. Um, I wrote some murder mystery games, which lots of people love to play. And then I got back into writing my first book, um, 201 Atwater, and this book was inspired by my in-law's house. Wow. Yeah. And that was how I got started. What was special about that house? Can I just uh, give her a Oh, absolutely. It's an old house. It was about 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit at their table, sit in the living room, and think, gee, I wonder what has gone on in this house before they lived here. And especially since it's set in a very historic area of New Haven, Connecticut, mm -hmm. I thought, I wonder if it ever played a part in history. And I said, I'm going to write a story about this house. And so I did. That's awesome. Now tell me about your other two books. Where did you get the inspiration for your other two novels? Well, I have to be honest. Once I got the first one done, I really didn't plan on writing anymore. <laughs> I didn't. I thought, I got my story out. What do I need to know? Everybody said, well, when's the next one coming? I said, okay. So the second one, someone said, set it in your own hometown. And I did. I took a very um, popular legend, a real life legend of an Indian princess. You've probably heard of uh, Sacagawea, but she's not Sacagawea. Uh -huh. um, the legend of Lilla Nona. And she was part of the Pudatuck Indians who once lived in my town, settled my town. And I took an old house, set it right smack dab in the area where the Indians used to live, and gave it a history. I, just, yeah. I bet that's a great book. I can't it's read, a lot wait of fun. To read that one. I have to warn you, people tell me it's a tearjerker. Oh, okay. Get ready. <laughs> get our tissues out when we read this tissues. one. Um, and tell me about, um, so the third one, where did you get your research for that? Is that Well, where did your my cousin's you? house. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And actually, the house belonged to my aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. And after they passed away, he moved back into the house with his family. And across the street from his house is the picture of Oak Cliff there. Uh, that's the actual cemetery across from his house. Oh, wow. And I thought, you know, the first two books were such fun to write had happy endings, but life isn't always about happy endings, is it? So, I gave the third house some very dark, sinister qualities. Mm. Only bad things happened to those people that lived there. You know, they lost their jobs, they might have had a death in the family. Actually, it opens with a murder. Oh wow, that's gotta be interesting. That's got to be. So any of you that, so actually all three books cater to, that third one is, um, would go to the kids who really like mysteries and into that, definitely. Oh, Absolutely. Hill. 
Now, tell me, what type of research do you do for these books, when, and how long does it take you to do that research? Ms. Okay. Ms. Research for me on these books, because I set them in the areas I grew up in, I knew a lot of the history, and I mm -hmm. like to incorporate real historical facts into my books. Mm -hmm. um, I use the internet, I use a lot of books that I either purchase, get from the library, mm -hmm. or I'll be writing letters to people saying, do you have any actual knowledge of what happened in a time period? Perhaps your grandparents do from pictures that I've seen. And so in order to do that, it takes a lot of time. I think for, well, for this book, because I'm not going to I just kind of wrote that one off the top of my head. But for Honeysuckle Hill, I really needed to research the Pudatuck Indians, their lifestyle, mm -hmm. how they migrated from one area to another. I needed to know some of their rituals. And I hope I did them justice. In the third book, I needed to research not only the cemetery itself, but how it got established. Yeah why it was established where it was, and actually some of the people who were laid to rest there. So I would give the entire book the true character of the area. How long did it take you to write this particular book? Two years. Wow. And then do you... And then it took me two years to do the second one, Honeysuckle <laughs> Hill. The first one, although it's the shortest, it took me almost five years. But it was your first book. It was my first it's book. It's the first book and getting everything out. And I was nervous. <laughs> yes. Yes, I bet. Now, where can we learn more about you, Ms. Marquette? Okay, I do have a website. Um, it's www.marianmarquette.com. Just link it together, .com. And on that website, um, you'll find information on each of the books. Mm -hmm. I also write a news column that's once a month where I talk about my memories of growing up as a child. And I have old columns linked there. You can go and read those. And for those of you Wildcats who never saw milk get delivered to your house in glass bottles or remember doctors making house calls, wow. you'll have some fun with that. Um, and I also talk about my writing, what got me into writing, and some of the new things that come up. And I have a newsletter that you can sign up for. It's absolutely free. Oh, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Now, um, before you leave and we close, I would like to present you with oh. a appreciation and thanks to Mary and Marquetto for your contribution to our students and making Literacy Week possible um, for this week of January 24th Isn't through the 28th. Wonderful? Literacy Thank Week. You Thank so you so much. much. And I'm not going to let you leave yet until you give our young Wildcat, some advice on um, what would you tell our young readers out there and writers? Okay, first thing and most important thing is if you want to write anything, read. Read, 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 and read some more. You have no idea how much your brain retains even from reading a fictional story. If you want to do research, you have to read. And whether it's on the internet, or in a book, or with a Kindle, or any of those devices, you need to read. And the second thing is most important, please, please study English grammar. Because when you go to write a book, and you have to edit it, believe me, there's going to be no editor to follow you up in today's world. And that's why you'll see a lot of books being printed with errors in them. So read first, study your English grammar. And I, it's not the same as having to text your friend next to you. Believe me, it's a lot different. Although, go ahead and text them that you're reading. That's fine. That's an absolutely good, good text message there. Well, thank you so much. We really thank appreciate you, you coming Anna. in. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Wonderful. Thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, I'm going to treasure this. <laughs> Bye, Wildcats. Bye, Wildcats.